So we've talked about the fact that proteins cannot get out of the glomerular capillaries and are not filtered. And until now, we said it was because there are little holes here, and those holes are too small for proteins to fit through. But the real answer is actually a little more complicated. And in order to understand it, we're going to have to go into more detail about the structure of this glomerulus, because this actually was just a cartoon, and there's a lot more going on than we showed. So in order to do that, let's take a 2D slice through this picture like that. It'll look almost the same, but just slightly different. So the slice might look something like this. So here would be your afferent arterial, and then it would be going out of the page, into the page. And then here would be the capillaries coming back out of the page. And then here, the efferent arterial coming back into the page and bringing blood out of the glomerulus. So the first thing we should do to be more precise about structure is notice that these are, these are capillaries, and so they're lined by endothelial cells, which are very thin cells. We'll draw a couple of them here. They all have nuclei, so this one might have a nuclei right here, a nucleus, sorry. And so the walls are not just membranes, they're full cells. And these arterioles also, of course, are bound by cells, endothelial cells, so let's draw them. So all of these are endothelial cells. And then of course Bowman space is also lined by cells, and these are not endothelial cells, but rather epithelial cells, so let's draw some of them. Of course they too will have nuclei, so we can draw one nucleus there. So these are epithelial cells. And then the next thing to add is that there's actually a whole population of cells that we never even mentioned. And those cells are actually located here. So they're actually here between all these capillaries and also abutting the arterioles here. And these are called mesangial cells, mesangial cells. And so the idea is that these mesangial cells basically give structure to the glomerular capillaries so that these capillaries are not freely floating. They can't swing around here inside the glomerulus and knock into one another. No, they're actually held together by the mesangial cells here in between them which are kind of hard to draw in this 3D structure, but I'm trying to give you a sense that they're here between the arterioles and then between all the capillaries on the inside. And we should mention that this area here that the mesangial cells live in, this area that kind of glues together the capillaries, has a name, and that'll be somewhat easy to remember. It's called the mesangium. And I'm saying easy to remember because, of course, it's like mesangial.